everyone, I'm Lenise. And I'm Mark. And you're watching another episode of Living Well, You in a Basin, where success is defined by you. Today on Beyond the Couch, we get to meet up with one of the fastest men on two wheels, and somebody that I've looked up to for a long time. With Thanksgiving approaching, we're going to take you into the kitchen to show you a fun apple pie recipe. Mmm, <laughs> apple to apple pie, here we go. On your way, we're going to head over to the golf course to talk to a lady that's made golf not only a physical activity for herself, but also something that she can enjoy with friends and de-stress from a long day's work. All right, Lenise, should we take a swing at it? Let's go do it. All right. Living Well, You Into Basin, presented by Ashley Regional Medical Center. Also made possible by Warriors Warehouse and You Into Recreation District. Living Well, Beyond the Couch. Hello everyone, thanks for watching another episode of Beyond the Couch. And with me today is uh, Ron Cushing, and I introduced you on the opening, Ron, as the fastest man on two wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that's a fair description? The fastest old man, let's put it that well, way. <laughs> old or young, you're fast. Uh, how long have you been riding bikes? Well, where I've kept track, 20 years out here. Tw 20 yeah, years. Yeah. yeah, and in Vernal, there's not a huge cycling community. I mean, 20 years ago, you might have been the only guy riding. Right? <laughs> on the road, yeah. On, on the yeah. road, right? And now it's starting to get more and more popularity as the kind of that urban trend of trying to be in, 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 in shape and healthy comes along. But 20 years ago, it was nothing like riding the bike that you've got right there. No, a lot different. You know, yeah. 10, 10 speeds? How many speeds It was did you a 12 have? speed, yeah. 12 speed? I was up, uptown. I had a 12 speed. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I ended up getting a different bike when Troy at altitude just looked at it and said, I can't get parts for this anymore, you yeah. know? so. Well, I had to upgrade. The, that, that was rough. The golden question is now you're, how old are you? 56. 56. And, and I met you through a, a kind of a social media app called uh, Strava. You're 56 years old. I'm, I'm 20 years younger than you. And, uh, and there's this king of the mountain segments. That's where there's certain stretches of the road you can race against other people virtually. And, and Ron, king of the mountain, they're all yours out here. Just almost, yeah. Almost. There, there's one that I'm still thinking about. Okay, there's, you got you got one in mind. That's only because somebody created it yesterday and he hasn't had time to write it. But but how do you, how do you do it? What's what's the key to your success? I and mean, you've been riding for 20 years, uh, 56. Some people might say, oh, that's too old to be the fastest guy in Vernal on, on two wheels. You know, there's some there's oh. some athletes out here. Well, one thing about cycling is it's it's really generous for the older you get it's it's not a high impact sport and so if you if you get into it and you're you really are somewhat competitive or just like to push yourself cycling is pretty kind in that regard it uh, it's it's not hard on the bones uh, so you know it's just a good motivator to get out of the office and get out on the road yeah get out on the yeah. road right and you're talking about low impact and you know sometimes running or uh, basketball or some of these team sports i mean by the time you're done playing an hour you need three or four days to recover yeah. where you can go really hard on a bike and yeah. and do it again the next day and yeah, that's one of the advantages of of the cycling it's just uh, low impact and, and you can just keep going yeah. ice your legs down after if you've gone super hard but the next day yeah, you're, you're good to go good again yeah. And, and you talk about cycling, and I've noticed that for you, it's not only is it a personal thing that you do, but you also include your family. Yeah. And, and why do you do that? Uh, well, it's a real good way to, to just spend some time doing something you both enjoy. My daughter and uh, her husband, he's now getting into it a little bit. So it's just been a good, you know, good activity for him and I to enjoy together when we come out. And, and uh, once my daughter's recovered from having a baby recently, the, you know, she'll be back into it more. And they live out in the Wasatch Front. They live out in Apple, uh, Mapleton right now. Okay, so. so so it's a family thing. And that's what I like about cycling. It's a lifetime sport. It's not something, uh, you know, you don't have to give this up at some point. You know, I know, I know there's uh, uh, guys that ride well into their 70s right. and probably even beyond. Yeah, yeah so, uh, and, and, and then we get to enjoy it. Basically, it's a four season sport too. Uh, you can, just about out here sometimes December and January if the roads are a little icy then it's it's harder to stay after it but generally speaking if the roads are dry you know you can you can do it so okay yeah. I've, I've got just to end I've got, I've got a few questions I want just okay. give me a one-word answer whatever the first the first thought when you think it when you hear this new paint uh, slick, slick. <laughs> uh, king of the mountain 
Hard work sometimes. I thought he was going to say mine. No, uh, no. Favorite ride? Whew. Jones Hole. Jones Hole. Oh, that's a steep one. Yeah. Oh, that's a tough. Uh, no. Favorite race? Uh, Mount Evans. Mount Evans. Mount Evans. Yeah. You've got to climb to 14,000 feet on Mount that's Evans. That's right. You start at 7 and end up at 14, and it's uh, all uphill. Some people don't climb 7,000 feet in a, in a year on riding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Ron, I really appreciate you being on the show. The whole goal of our show is to show people the different things, the different activities you can do with yourself, with your family and your community to stay fit and active. And you're an inspiration to us. Thanks for being on the show. Good to be here. Thank you. Having a baby is one of the most important events in your life. At Ashley Regional Medical Center, we are prepared to make that experience memorable by providing a secure and pleasant environment. When you arrive at our birthplace, you will be greeted by our award-winning OB nursing staff. Their desire is to make you as comfortable as possible and to provide you with all the information you need or want. You will be placed in one of our modern birthing suites. Family members are welcome, but only with your consent. During the labor process, the nursing staff will attend to your every need and monitor your progress. Your physician will be kept up to date by the nursing staff and attend to you when it's time to deliver your bundle of joy. After your delivery, you will be taken to our beautiful and relaxing post-delivery rooms. Your care will still be monitored by our staff and you and your baby will receive constant attention. Choose Ashley Regional Medical Center for your OB care. Warriors Warehouse has the preventative and natural products you need to improve your overall health. Nutritional supplements for maximum performance? We've got that too. And if you're looking for the best variety of gluten-free food, the search is over. We also cater to the needs of our customers by providing individualized diet and supplement plans, skincare, and friendly professional service. We have the education and experience to answer your questions and give you first-class assistance backed by our pharmacy certified Dr. Lewis. Let us show you why we're your number one source for health products. Living well, dish by dish. November and December are a big time for pies. It's one of my favorite things about those months. Today I have Mindy Smith with me, and in my eyes, she is like the pie guru. So I'm excited to have her here today. Mindy, you're going to show us an apple pie today. Is that what you're going to make am. for us? Yes. All right. Yes. Well, let's get started. All right. I'm going to start with the crust because, in my opinion, a homemade crust is the most important part of the pie. And I know a lot of people get kind of scared with the crust because it seems scary to do. I don't but make it's not pies that hard. because of the crust. So. Well, the crust is easy as pie. <laughs> so I like that. <laughs> yeah, it works. Easy as pie. So I just use, usually Crisco shortening, it makes a difference. Don't use the um, generic brand if you can help it. And I put a little bit of salt and flour. And then you're just going to cut in the shortening okay. to the flour. And you want to cut it in until it's like just crumbly, kind of pea-sized crumbs. Okay. So I'll just kind of so you have a little Mix pie pastry. Through. Yeah, you can do this with a fork or two knives too. You don't okay. have to. I did it forever at the beginning part of our marriage, you know, when you're like too poor to buy a pastry oh, sure. blender. Yeah. So I would just use um, just knives. Too poor or just cheap like I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we were poor too. Yeah, they're not that expensive. So you'll just cut it until it looks kind of crumbly and even and you don't have any big huge pieces of shortening. Okay. And then... Now I'm going to hold this up really quick okay. for the camera. I want them to see what that looks like. So it's pretty crumbly. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to mi mix it too much. All right. And then you're going to put some ice water in. I had ice in this earlier just to make sure it was really cold. And at the beginning you can kind of add a little bit more. You don't want to add too much. And you're just going to mix in ice water until the dough kind of starts sticking together in a ball. So you put ice in it because you want it really cold. Yeah. That's the key is as the cold, cold water. As cold as you can. Okay. Yeah. And you can use pie crust recipes that have butter or whatever. You know, any of them work. I've used all sorts of different recipes. Um, I like the shortening because it's a little bit flakier. But there's nothing so. better than a flaky crust. Yeah. About so it looks like that. It's okay. not really wet, but it's starting. So to you come didn't together. use all the water. No. You just, just until it gets yeah. to where you want that. And you just kind of learn how to eyeball it. And okay. If it feels too dry, you can always or too wet, you can add more flour. If it's okay. too dry, you can add more water. Okay. And then you're going to roll out. I already did the bottom one, so. Okay. And I will, I, I, I'm going to show how she's already got her bottom crust here ready to go. And then 
just put some flour on. If you can get like a silicone thing like this to roll out on, it's so much easier. Or roll it on just some parchment paper okay. or wax Something paper. Something so it doesn't stick to the yeah. counter. And also, I'll show you when I put it on how easy it is to do it if you have something that will bend. Okay. So my family loves pies. They're my husband's favorite thing. So I didn't know what to get him for Christmas last year, and I gave him Pie of the Month Club. And he says it's his favorite present that he's ever had. And every month, it's like giving again. So I make him a different pie every single month. Well, and that's why I thought of getting you on the show, because I've noticed you know, you're always posting your pie of the month. And yes. I thought, that's, that's neat. Because not only can you make this for holiday parties or whatever, but give it for a Christmas gift. And like she said, the gift that keeps giving. That's right, every month. That's fun. And this, this part's pretty easy. Just if it feels like it's sticking a little or coming up on your rolling pin, just put a little bit more flour. Okay. But see, it really isn't hard to make a pie crust. Yeah, I mean, if that's it, that's, that's crazy how easy that was. Yeah, that's really it. That's... Okay. So before I put that on, I'm going to grab the apples. Okay. You can open that up. All right. I made most of them ahead of time. My apple pie recipe is pretty basic, and I'm actually really horrible with measuring things. It drives people nuts when they ask me for my recipes <laughs> because <laughs> I'm like, oh, here, I don't really there. have a recipe. <laughs> but it just goes to show you, you can just kind of put in whatever you like, and it works. Now that's so, awesome. That it yes. slices and. Apple peeler core slicer. If you can get one of those, it makes them all really thin and even, so they bake much better. Okay. So if you can use one of those, or make sure you just slice them really, really thin. And then I just have some sugar, um, like some cinnamon, cinnamon, nutmeg. Um, so a little just, bit. Just season it to the to your taste. Yeah. And you want a little bit of citrus in there, like orange juice or lemon juice. Okay. And if your apples are really juicy, you can put a little bit of flour in there too. Okay. And then you'll just pour it right into there. Right, I'll let so, you do the okay. honors. Oh, awesome. <laughs> awesome. I'm good for something here. You are. And I like a lot of apples. I like to kind of have it a little bit this high. It's probably not the most sanitary, but we did wash ahead of time, and <laughs> yes. I'm just going to use my fingers. I forgot to have a spoon out. Well, and I usually use my hands for everything okay. when I cook, so. so it will be just like I make them. <laughs> and then I usually put a little bit of butter on the top. You know, I don't really know why. But just the recipe I used at first said to, and I guess it makes it I taste better. I've seen a lot of people do that, so there's there is some secret, some trick to the butter, but yeah. uh, but maybe sometimes it just adds I forget. Little... Yeah, it's not a big. So deal whether you do it or not, it's not. Yeah, it's not a horrible thing if you forget. But and sure, see, I use my hands, better. and it looks really pretty. <laughs> okay, so here's where the magic of the silicone bottom thing comes in. You can just fold the crust right in half. Thank you. And then just fold it in half again. Oh, awesome. So when you have it in fourths, it's really easy just That's to put on neat. top. Yeah, that makes it 10 times easier. And don't panic if you if it rips a little bit. I mean, crust is really forgiving. Just fix it, okay. mend it, and you're fine. You can go around. If you have excess, you can kind of cut it off. Sometimes I'm really lazy, and my family likes crust, so I just fold it under, and they just get a really thick crust. So just make sure as you're folding it under that you grab the underneath crust okay. also. You're just pinching the two of them together. Yep. I'm just kind of getting them all put together first. And there's lots of different ways to do it. Like lots of people have their own signature little pinch. But I just go around like this with my oh, flower. With oh, my so finger and knuckle. Stick. Yeah, gotcha. and I'm just kind of Yeah, just making a little Yeah, just making a edge. little rope edge here. Mm -hmm. You can use a fork, you can pinch it a different way, but it's pretty easy. And then you need to vent the crust. Um, you can just cut slits or... And that's an important part to remember because if you... Yes. <laughs> it's got to vent. escape somewhere and yeah. it'll escape all along your edges into your oven if you don't do this. Okay, so you're not cutting so. slits, you're doing a little... I'm doing an apple. Apple. Because that's... Oh, cute. What I, that's kind of my apple pie thing. So, so this you want, one's like you can do messy. Fun, or you can yeah. just do the three slits as long as there's a way for it to vent. Right. It doesn't. You can do a picture, just slits. It doesn't matter. And then just the top crust, just so it looks really pretty and it tastes really good. Just brush a little milk. And again, I've like I said, I've never seen use, this before. The yeah. milk on top. I use my fingers. Okay, that goes to show how little I cook pies, but I've never <laughs> seen that before. And then just sprinkle a little bit of sugar. And then it just looks really pretty when it cooks. 
And then all I do, my last step, I just cover that with foil and then I'll cook that for about 40, 45 minutes with foil on top. And that helps your apples get done and soft without your crust burning. Okay. Then you take the foil off and cook it the rest of the way so that the crust is brown. That's it. And oh, serve fun. it with ice cream. That's yeah. like I, one of the you most important eat, things. Especially apple pie without ice cream. Yes, so. all mode has to be. Okay, so I'm gonna show, this is her finished, finished product here. Um, beautiful, it, it's, it's decorative, it just looks great. So, and you can see the little sugar and stuff on top. So, thank you so much, this was so fun. You're so welcome. I, I, I've done a couple now from the last time we did this and this makes me wanna do even some more. So, have some fun this, this holiday season's making some pies. She gave a great uh, idea for maybe a Christmas gift and just go try it out. Thanks okay. again. You're welcome, thank you. Living Well Health and Wellness Tip, brought to you by Warriors Warehouse. Glutamine is an important amino acid. It makes up about 50% of muscle tissue and is used by the digestive tract for immune health. So since glutamine is used by the intestinal tract, one way that you can uh, improve the delivery to your muscle tissue for recovery is to choose um, the trans Um When you use glutamine for recovery purposes, you'll want to use 5 to 10 grams three times a day with one of those doses being directly after your workout. Living well, your way. Living Well Your Way is your story on what you do to live a more well-rounded and enjoyable life. Today I'm here at the golf course and I'm going to talk to a group of gals that have made golf an important part of their life, but they've learned to enjoy friendships and have some fun exercise while at it. So let's go talk to them and see what they have to say. Hey guys, how are you? Hi. Good, how are you? Good. Good. We're here to talk about you guys though. Okay. Golfing, I want to hear all about it. This is something that you guys do quite often together. Uh, earlier I was introducing the piece that living well your way is not always about the physical aspect of things, but coming out and enjoying the day with friends and de-stressing, and so tell me a little bit about what you guys do. Well, we like to get together as friends and we golf. We love to golf together. Um, we get together about two or three times a week, most of the time three times a week. Um, sometimes, most of the time in the morning, and then we golf on Tuesday evenings as well together with the Women's League. Um, we come in the morning, we used to come about six o'clock when it was light enough that we could come that early in the morning, and we would um, use the push carts and push our carts around nine holes, and if we could stay a little bit longer, we would do another nine holes, um, but we would try to get at least nine holes in before we would go to work in the morning, and it was a great thing for us to do. Now that's one of the reasons I wanted you on the show. You and I actually, a little history, we used to work out quite a bit together, running and biking, and you found that that was pretty hard on your knees and just yes. your body overall. Yes, it was. <laughs> and this summer I ran into you down here at the golf course and you were telling me how much fun you've enjoyed doing this, that one, you've been able to get some physical activity with it by walking around and things like that, but also how good it's been as far as a a break from your stress at work and, and just the everyday things of life. Yes, it is a great stress relief. You know, when we get together as friends, we laugh and we have a great time together. Um, <laughs> whether we're doing good at golfing or whether we're just being together as friends, it's a great stress relief. 
Well, I've watched you guys today, and you guys have a lot of fun together. There's been a lot of laughter, a lot of craziness. In fact, I think they have some sort of a nickname for you, I heard. Well, <laughs> well what's her nickname? She-Ra. She-Ra. Oh, oh, she can really get the ball. The warrior princess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she outdrives us by at least 25 yards. Yeah. yeah. Consistently. <laughs> she yeah, does. does. And it has been fun. You know, in the, in the past years, I've had other women ask me to join my job. And I didn't think I was a good enough golfer to do that. But you don't have to be. And, and we've had a blast. We've had so much fun and laughed. And it doesn't matter whether you golf well. It's just getting there. And we schedule it so that we actually do it. So we can see each other. We, we all went to high school together. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. And so we've stayed in contact over the lunch, you know, on a regular basis. And then we all started golfing together. Well, well and I think it's going to bring us closer. It really has renewed that friendship that we we had with one another and and made it stronger. Well, and I think you have to have that, especially women. We we have to have that friendship. Men, I don't think have to have it as much as yeah. as we women do. So it's just something we can. I, I don't know. There's just some strength in friendship mm -hmm. that it provides us. Now you mentioned that this is something you like to come out and do, and, and I think all of you said this with your spouse as well. Uh -huh. So what a great. Um, just time spent with with your husband yeah. sometimes we don't get that time we don't take that time and so what what a great thing to come out and enjoy doing and then also with your family she's I think it was you that mentioned you even come out with your grandkids yeah well, my grandsons will be 11 at the end of October and I started him golfing when he was two and a half and so it's been really fun to golf with the grandkids and then we all took our we all went on a trip in March to Myrtle Beach with our husbands and that was really fun because it was a, just a golf trip that we had and then we went to Park City for the weekend. We went to Park City. And golf there. Golf with, our, with our husbands. Yes. And, yeah. and that was really fun. Really well, that's what, so you can you can do it here locally, but you can take it and, and make a trip out of it because no matter where you go, there's a golf course. There is. Yeah. Right. There is. And it's something that you can do from 2 to 82. Mm -hmm. right? it's, a, it's a fun activity that I think is a lifetime. Yeah. It's a lifetime. Yeah. Sport. I mean, some people don't think of it as a sport, but it is. It really is. And actually, the better physical condition you are in, the better golfer you will be, but you don't have to be. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Me and so, my husband we used to travel around with horses. Now we travel around with golf clubs. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot cheaper. That's fun. Well, yeah, I, and one thing you guys have brought up that I really like is that you don't have to be good. I think sometimes that's intimidating. You think if you don't know how to golf, you're not going to pick the sport yeah. up. So you're telling me that even at 36, I know that's not that old, but I can get out here and I can I can learn how to golf. Oh, yeah, yeah 56. You can take uh, a couple of lessons from the pro and he'll help you. And you can you can start at any age. Yeah. I really think any age you can start golf. Well, I know my boys kind of started it this summer and they've had a great time with it. And so I think I've watched them and, and seen how good it is for them. And, and I, I can see how it could be a great family activity. Um, a great activity with your friends. Yeah. I see a lot of times when I come down here, a lot of spouses together or groups yeah. of friends. So what a what a fun yeah, thing. It is. Um, if anybody's thinking about, ever th thought about um, golfing at Women's League, it's really a lot of fun. On Tuesday nights we come down and there's a bunch of nice ladies that golf. All of us did it this year and we really had a good time. It was on Tuesday nights at 5.30 and a lot of fun. Now, to do the, the Women's League, do you have to have some experience first, or can you be inexperienced and come and join and just learn that way? You really don't have to, and they were so patient, because I had never, I had never golfed in Women's League before until this year, and they were so patient, and, and just taught us how to, you know, kind of learn and, and to know the rules a little bit to golfing in different tournaments and different things like that, which you don't have to golf in tournaments. But it's just kind of fun to get to know how to do some of those things. We got to know a lot of ladies. So yes. yes. Well, and you have your handicap. Friends. You'll, you'll be given a handicap, and so that evens things out a little bit. So, so if you're, so you're not helps. as good, you can. Yeah, you have a handicap. <laughs> I, I'm going to need a big handicap if I ever come down. So well, that, that's okay because that just makes that it all helps, even. Helps that helps you out. score. Yeah. yeah. Helps you score yeah. Better. Oh, well, good. I can score yeah. better that way. <laughs> Well, I really appreciate you guys coming out and, and showing us a little bit about the game of golf and showing us that, again, it's not just about physical activity, but even though you are getting that while you're here on the golf course, but it's just a well-rounded just way to come out and, and better your life through friendships and just laughter and having a great time. It's so, a great thing to do. It's a great thing to do, and I'm glad I did it.
Well, I appreciate you guys. Okay. So thanks so much for being on the show. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you Lenise. We want to thank you for watching our show today. And we want to thank all of our wonderful guests who've shared their stories with us. As you can tell, there's just so many different ways to stay active and healthy here in the Uinta Basin. If you have a story to tell, contact us at VTV Channel 6. And until next time, live well, Uinta Basin.